Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the Mama Gummy <laughs> experiment. All right, so I said I'm going to show you my project, so let me show you part one of it. Now, you guys that have been coming to my um, YouTube channel for a while know that one of my most favorite things to do is to doodle. So this is a doodle page. This is the photocopy of it, I think. Yeah, this is a photocopy. Um, I was looking at someone else's doodles, trying to emulate them, sort of, and I ended up with this, and I decided not to fill in the middle. That, that was done on purpose. You'll see in a second. Um, so I really like doing this frame. I thought it was so much fun. So I had an idea. I want to make a book. So what I did was I fussy cut the inside out. And I don't know if you can see it. I folded the paper and then marked the two ends here. And they, they have been... They have been folded already, creased. All right, so the next part. I don't remember if it was Louise, Janetta, or another woman who did this. It might have been another woman. She made books out of them. I think it's another woman. I'll have to find her video. I'll put it down somewhere in there. And she took a file folder and is going to make a kind of... It's not, you know, it's not real sturdy, but it'll make a great floppy book. All right, so I laid this down on the file folder just to see where I need to make my creases and how I glue this on here. And just so happens that from the center fold to the first creasy line on the, let's well, do it this way, um, first creasy line here on the file folder is the exact same measurement of where I marked on this paper. So I'm going to take my paper and lay it down on here. And when I fold, when I crease this, this will wrap around it. So what I'll do is I need to measure this and cut out the file folder where I want it to go. All right, so I'm not going to use this paper as a wrap around to cover the edges of the book. I'm not I'm not doing that. This was photocopied on eight and a half by eleven. I need a longer sheet of paper in order to make the excess paper wrap around the book so you don't see the edges of the book. But for GP general purposes, I'm gonna do it like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this I may, and then I'll crease this and wrap it around it to see what I need on each side, which is probably four or five inches. Let me take a ruler and see. So this will go about here. Let me see what I got left. About five inches. A little, a little over five inches, like a five and an eighth. And then this should be the same thing. Let me do five and an eighth from the edge right here for the fold is five and an eighth. Not quite the same. Doesn't matter. All right, so it, it'll work out. All right, so the point is, I'm gonna take this, and I wanted something very colorful in the center because this is black and white. It's not exciting. I mean, visually it's okay, but it could be a lot better. So what I'm going to do is take this piece of Mamagami paper, and I'm going to glue this on here like this, and this is going to be the center portion of my book for the cover of the book. So, now I have to figure out how to do the logistics of it. So I think what I will do first is I will do the crease here on the folder. I bought these legal size folders for um, a class I was taking in uh, by um, Andrea Shebelu out of um, 
San Jose. She has a shop in San Jose, and she gives classes, and she does online classes. This was the first time it, I used this was to make um, a calendar book, which I, I used for a year, and I, I loved it. Okay, so there's my, there's my crease, which will be the spine of my little book. So I'm going to take this. Where's the ends that I marked? Here we go. So this will be on here like this. So I will probably, um, this will not be a Coptic book. So I'm telling you now, this will not be a Coptic book, but it should look like this. And then it will be cut off here and here. And then the red will be underneath all of it. Let me see if I can kind of give you an idea. All right, this is not gonna be exact, but it'll give you a basic idea what it's actually gonna look like. So then we have it like this. So that will be my book. All right, so this will be on the Mamagami paper, will be on the spine. All righty. So now I will fast forward through this because I'm watching a movie. And um, then I'll come back and talk about different, I'll probably cut in and out and talk about different stages of the construction. Okay, I glued the Mamagami paper onto my form here. I folded the folder. Now I'm going to put this over the folder and see it just, I still have my marks, thank goodness. Uh, I'm just going to have, I may have to go back over the crease because now I have the paper here. Let's see, what can we use? I have a small version here. Let's use this instead of dragging out the Martha. Line this up. Hopefully this is straight. Because I want it to yep, go in the groove. So I'm going to crease the Mamagami and then end up with my crease up here at the top, which I did the first time, but I just didn't mark it with a pencil. Whoops. Okay, now let's do this one. I don't need the middle one creased because it doesn't matter. That was for measuring purposes only. Let's move this over a little bit. We need in the groove and we're not getting in the groove. There we go. Okay, I hope that's straight. We'll find out in a second. All right, so what I might have to do is tack down this portion first, then I'll glue the rest of it on later in stages. How about that? Okay. That way I know for sure that it's going to fold. It'll be nice and crisp. And that is not easy. That is not the way it's supposed to look. <laughs> okay. That did not go well. And therefore we must try again. Oh, that is, where's the crease? Fooey. <laughs> dead, dead gummit. Dead gummit. All right. I think this is the original crease. Yes, it is. The, the part that makes it difficult is the Mamagami paper because, honestly, it doesn't lay very flat. It's very bumpy and textured, which is, you know, what it's for, but it's not helping this. All right. Let's do it again this way and make sure that we are even with the top, which does not look like we are. There we go. I think that's the crease. Nope, it's a little off. Well, fully. Okay, so I need to crease this again. Why? 
Whoa, why is this not even? Okay, sorry, my husband's getting dressed and so I have to open up the studio door because I have to make sure the grass in our yard is protected by the dogs, which will alert me if a bug lands on a blade of grass. So you hear the boof in the background because evidently some bug had the nerve to land on a blade of grass. I call my dogs the nosy Nancys. <laughs> Their little faces are underneath the fence. Every time they go outside, the fence has a divot of dirt underneath it. <laughs> the dogs looking with the butts up in the air and the faces down in the dirt looking underneath the fence. It cracks me up. Okay, so I think this is much better this way. It may not be, it's not perfect, but hey, it's an experiment. If I do it enough times, I might be able to get it right. I don't know. Let's not push it, right? Okay. So we have this here, and I'm going to put it at the very bottom. And then lay this flat so I can kind of get an idea of where... This is going to be cut. Ordinarily, I would not do it this way. But this is a weird item because of my choice of the Mamagami paper. It makes it a little strange. All right. And this will go across here. Okay, hopefully this will be pretty close to what I need for it to be. Look at him. <laughs> I wonder if I glue this. Well, let me just cut it first. Don't be an incaboop. I have to cut it with a roller. And exacto knife. And we need a mat. Ta da. All right, I'm not going to be able to get this whole thing on there. So y'all just have to bear with me for a second. All right, so I need a, this here, and I want to line this up. Although, I don't think... If I ruin the folder, it's no big loss. rid of that awkward part. And I'll do this side, do the same thing. Because it's a little hard to do this. I may have to trim the edges. Whoops. That's too much blade. That off of there. And did we get up here at the top? Yes, we did. Okay. Now we're going to do this and hope that we're close. And if we're not, we're going to need a piece of chocolate and a Valium. <laughs> Ta da! All right, oh, uh, where's my form? I just had it in my hand. Where'd it go? Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> it's under the file folders I cut off. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's, I think the best thing to do would be glue the spine first. Yes, no? Eh. 
let's glue the spine on first. I can sew the three hole pamphlet stitch mess later. Yes, it will go through the glue, but it'll be fine. Sorry, I'm talking with the, the pin in my mouth. All right, let's see this is working well. Right on the line there. And maybe just go this way. <laughs> Isn't it great when a plan comes together for a change? I mean, when it comes together. <laughs> oh, I think I think this might work. Okay. So then I need to stretch this out a little bit because the first time I did it, the fold was a little bit off. Where's one of them fancy tools? I don't want to rake too much on here because I'm afraid I'll tell it to tear the paper. I don't know what it's going to be like trying to sew stuff in here, so I might do one of those um, insert bindings where you where you um, put a piece here and sew it on here separately and then glue it. Uh, Cory Dahman is the one I saw do it. Alright, so this is not quite straight, which means if I trim this, I'm going to trim off my stuff. Alright, so in order to save some time and tears, where are my credit card scrapey things? Oh, in the drawer. <laughs> well disguised and hidden. Okay, never mind. We're going to do this. There's no point. I got all this stuff here. I might as well use it. And the brush still stays pretty good after you use it. All right. Pink, pink, pink. I don't want to paint it over. This other one. If it holds tissue paper together, I should be able to get this work this way. But I will need to smooth it a tad. See what it did? It made a pinch here. Okay, so that's not what I wanted. We're going to pull this up a tad. So gluing the spine first was not the best idea ever. All right. I wonder if I can get this up a little bit more without ripping everything to shreds. That was really dumb. done a better job creasing it. The only thing is, is this Mamagami paper makes it a little bit difficult. Probably what I should have done was, is put a flat piece of paper behind the Mamagami so that it would make it easier to glue. Because this is very crinkly and all out of whack. That's what I should have done. What I should have done is I should have taken a piece of white paper or paper and put it on the back of the Mamagami to glue it onto this and then glue it onto the folder because I think it would have made it a lot easier to do than this situation here, which is kind of tentative at best. I need for this to come together on here. So that means the rest of this is not going to lay flat. All right, well, you know, it's an experiment. 
towards that paintbrush. And we're going to do the best we can to make it work. Because we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> I have matte medium, just just saying. But since I've got this coagulated goo, I might as well use it. All right, so I wanna make sure this lines up with the edge as best I can. And then I'll have to cut off any excess and it did it again. It's going to leave that that funky line there, which means I have to pull it off. <laughs> I feel like I'm wrestling a grease pig. I already ripped the paper. Nice. <laughs> I think not putting some kind of stabler either on the back is was is a mistake. Not to use something on the back of the Mamakami to give it some stability. So, number one lesson learned. And this will be a soft notebook. It's not going to be a hard surface notebook. And I've ripped the paper, so it'll be all right, I guess. So there it is. Look at that. Okay, so I'm wondering if I shouldn't put some of that. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's a yes. Let's um, put some of this on here to preserve it around the opening to make sure it's going to stay. Since this is a photocopy, I'm not worried about anything smearing. I'll rub more on here. I'm not going to color in any of the black and white stuff. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. So I'm gonna put this around the opening. Whoops. All right, what's going on here? We have a gap. And that should not be happening. We're going to glue it down. Go around the edges to make sure I don't have any more gaps like that. Oh, yes, I do! <laughs> lovely. Just lovely. Oh, and I just put my hand right smack dab in the middle of it. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not matte medium to where I'll regret it later. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, not too bad around here. Just a little tad. While this is wet and a little funky, it doesn't leave weird stuff on your skin like matte medium or glue would do. I just go wash it off my hands and it comes right off. It's it's basically like using cornstarch and water. But it's a, I think they consider this some kind of a gum paste or something. All right, that's gonna pooch up because there needs to be glue underneath there. It's okay. All right, I'm gonna clean my brush real quick. Get it out to dry. Put a lid on this and this will go in the fridge because I'm probably done with this the rest of the day till this completely dries. And then once it dries, I will come back and I will trim the edges. See what happened here? I'm going to be missing some of my black and white, so I'm thinking what I will do is I'll take some file folder and add it onto here. This side's fine, this side is not. Maybe I should make it like this <laughs> so no one will notice it. Shh, y'all don't tell. <laughs> All right, so let me let, let this dry for a couple days so that I know it's good and stable before I start cutting on it. So I'll be back as soon as this dries off. 
Alrighty, here's computer paper. And since so this is basically the proper size, I think maybe this might be more well suited. Let me move this out of the way. More be well suited for this experiment. Maybe I don't want to use the sketch paper as part of the experiment. I still have to cut some off. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not sure how many signatures I can get in here. It might be, I don't want to put one giant one. Maybe two, if I put three, I won't be able to put very many pieces of paper in this. And I wanted to, I was thinking about using this for documenting my knitting and then putting my photographs in here with measurements and types of yarn and maybe put a piece of yarn in there and tape it in. But I don't, this probably isn't thick enough for that. I don't know. Well, we'll just, I'm going to cut the paper. I'm going to cut the paper and see what two signatures looks like. And it'll be a three hole pamphlet stitch. I'm not doing any fancy, doing anything fancy, but I was reviewing my video yesterday and trying to edit some of it this morning. And I looked at it and I thought, well, I'm a goober. What I should have done is take this and just glue it flat on a book board and do it on both sides. But of course this, this is an original, well, no, it's not. It's a photo. This is a photocopy. I could have photocopied this twice, cut this out twice, do the book board and glue this on here on one side of a book board and then do it on the other side of the book board and made this a Coptic book. <gasps> oh my gosh. See what sleep and a cup of coffee will do for you? <laughs> All right, so I really think I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a giant Coptic book and use that for my knitting book. Yes, I think so. Yep, yep. I think I'll do that. But for, for time being, I will go ahead and do this. And I will cut this down to size so that I can fit it inside here because I certainly don't want it to look like that. Yeah. While I'm here and I'm working on this, I want to mention that I think I'm going to put this um, doodle page on or in my Etsy store. So anybody who wants to try this with, you know, gluing your own paper on the inside, making your own sort of book, I think I'm going to put this in the Etsy store as a digi print. Give me about a week before it comes into the Etsy store and you can buy it and I probably will just make it a dollar a copy just like I do a lot of other things that are digi prints in the shop. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. All right. Let me cut this paper and I'll be back and show you how far I've gotten. Alrighty. I made a decision. <laughs> Alright. So I took 10 and 10, 20 pieces of computer paper, folded them half, so there's 10 and 10. And I think I'm only going to do two signatures. But what my decision was is I really want the inside to look nice. So I printed off two more of these, and I want to show you the difference in the color, in the intensity. This is the original print that I did the Mamagami paper from. Look what happens when you smush it and smush it and smush it. You get a more intense color, which I am thrilled about because the fibers are more compressed and crunched in. It gave, look at that. It gives a better print. So to save some time though, I am going to trim these two pieces up and I am going to glue them on the inside cover on the front and the back to finish it off because let's face it, this file folder is not that attractive. And if I have enough of the paper left, I might line this with it, but for me it doesn't matter. But the upside to using the file folder is remember there's a crease here and a crease here but I just noticed there's a crease that runs this way and another one for that 
And if I'm only going to put two signatures in there, two signatures in there, there's my spacing. I don't really have to do anything too spectacular to figure out the spacing because I'll, I'll do it right on those creases. Everything will be evenly spaced. And there we go. We'll have a book. So I'm going to glue these in and I'm going to sew these guys in. And when I get done doing all this, the finishing touches, I will come back and show you the finished book.
Alrighty, so I am done with this. Um, I did look for orange. I have waxed thread. I did look for orange, and the only orange I had was more a burnt orange, and I decided I would go ahead and go with the yellow, and it kind of blends in. It's not perfect, but it's, it's not horrible. All right, so when I cut the paper on, I moved stuff off the paper cutter, and when I cut it on the paper cutter, I rolled it down too far, and I've seen in other videos where people have put a buffer. So next time I cut folded paper like this, see how it bent the paper, left it kind of crinkled, um, I will put the buffer down like a piece of uh, cardstock or something on the top and the bottom. So when I crank down the, the holder, then um, it won't mash the paper because you can't, can't sell stuff that's got marks on it. This is for me, but I learned something from it. So I'm okay with the way it looks because it taught me a couple things that I needed to know. Um, if I was selling this, the inside would be covered. I would not leave it open as um, you can see the file folder. And one signature is a little bit, a little bit taller in the, in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it and then, yep, I'm going to have to cut it. I don't understand. Okay, so one's taller and one's shorter. <laughs> Fooey. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to nudge a little off of this. I'm going to mark it with a pencil and then I'll cut it with the X-Acto knife. And then when you flip it over this way... <laughs> This one is a little taller, a little fooey, fooey, fooey. And it's a little crooked, so maybe straighten it out a little bit. Okay. So we'll make some adjustments on here. That's no, not too bad. Make adjustments on it. But I learned something. You know, it's been a while since I've made a three-hole pamphlet, a three-hole pamphlet book. So I am horribly out of practice doing this. Um, let's see. What are we going to do? I need some way to cut this without cutting any of this. I have to go get a, a pad, a smaller pad. Let's see what we have in here. Uh -huh. This is why you have small things <laughs> for big screw ups. All right, so let me cut this hair. And let's see how this works out. If it doesn't, it's okay, because like I said, it's an experiment. The cover was the main thing. I was, uh, speaking of cover, okay. The cover is the main thing that I was trying to teach myself to use the ma uh, mamagami paper. So, this will take a couple of strokes. Right, that's much better. I don't know how I got one taller than the other, but I did. Anywho, so this experiment is done. I now have some kind of a weird folder book <laughs> with mushed paper, no finishing inside. But hey, you know, I thought it was kind of cool. So it led me to believe that I need to do something different next time and make my book this way. And then put the do the Coptic stitch on the side. It'll give me a larger book to put my knitting stuff in, like photographs and that kind of stuff. So I would do it this way. Also, what I would do different is, is if I'm going to glue the Mamagami paper inside the cutout, I would glue the Mamagami on another sheet of white paper first, then glue this on top of it because it makes it easier to glue it to your substrate. So that's it. I think this one's a done.
We'll call it done and then we'll figure out what to do with it. Um, I don't know. There's not a lot of paper in it and you can't... I, I have a little room to grow in it but because of the way the folder is it's already got alligator mouth because of the paper that I used. So I may have to put some kind of tie on it later but I will use it and play around with it and see what comes of it and you'll probably see it in a flip sooner or later. Probably later. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody with my, my odd experiment. Um, I did I did learn some things so you know that's the thing is if you don't experiment with your paper and your things like that when you're trying to teach yourself how to do something you're never going to learn anything because you never took any chances. That's the thing. I don't want stuff to turn out perfect on my videos because I want people to see what it really is like making something whether it turns out right or it doesn't or you change your mind about what you like or don't like about something. This, the, these are realistic videos. These are not highly edited other than to add captions and, and to fast forward through what I'm doing, but that's really not edited. And if it is edited, it's only because I'm trying to shorten the time so the video is not like 10 hours long. Um, but that's it. I want you to see the good, the bad, the ugly, and sometimes the nice. And learn something from me about crinkling your paper in your paper cutter to where your paper looks like whoops let's go this looks like that you don't want that especially if you sell your stuff it needs to be perfect so practicing like this helps you to make the next thing perfect all righty i'm done yay all right thanks everybody for watching and i will see you in the next video bye bye